much. Uh, <clears throat> that was quite uh, engaging discussion and I'll be switching topic to a little bit technical but I'll try to make it uh, simpler uh, on the topic of virtualization. So yeah, again, it's good to be back on the ET Auto in-person conference after about two, three years now. And uh, virtualization as a topic, it's not alien to automotive industry. In fact, uh, automotive industry has been one of the early adopters of simulations. Yet, today organizations across the globe are having enormous interest, specifically for EV and autonomous, to take the virtualization to a next level. And that is being done by breaking what I call as organizational silos in the product design teams. And that's going to be the uh, topic of my talk today. Uh, as introduced, my name is Sheetal Kumar Joshi and I work at ANSYS. Okay, so it's uh, just customary for me to introduce my organization before I start. So at ANSYS, simulation is all that we do. Uh, it started with uh, structural simulations, but over the last couple of decades, we invested about 5 billion plus in acquiring 25 plus companies and investing in our core technologies with our in-house R&D. Uh, to provide the simulation platform that enables the virtualization journey to our customers. Our uh, latest acquisition on scale is poised to propel the entire simulation technology to the cloud way, more accessible in the way that probably we have not imagined today. So with that brief intro, let me jump to the topic today. Uh, Again, as I mentioned, automotive industry is not new to simulations. And those who have been exposed to this side of world, they would know that, you know, aerodynamic drags or crash, vehicle crash, like we get four, four star, five star in cap rating, uh, HVAC, thermal cooling, all these things are part and parcel of product development process. Processes are matured, even though there is a lot of innovation going over there, I would say organizations have their methods and practices in place today. What is missing then? What more needs to be done, specifically in context of EV? I would call it a performance test. These are the places where there is a strong interplay between the physical design, behavioral model, and your control software. That's where the major need is. And uh, if I give you a simple example, Predicting range of an automotive car on EV. I think is a fairly, there are tools and practices that are available today, which could, which, which could predict range for let's say WLTP or MIDC range with a fair accuracy. However, we know that battery range drastically get reduced once you go to hilly region, once you go to high temperature region, once you go to tra traffic region. So the conventional simulation methods fail to capture this variability accurately. And that's the need, that's the need to gap the bridge, uh, uh, bridge the gap. Uh, another part is kind of uh, control tunings. We want to give our controls engineers a very good control plant models to be tuned early in the cycles. Another need is to have the degradation model being part of the system simulation. So that the lags of kilometers of testing that we have to do today uh, that can be reduced, okay? So that's the need, and because of this unfulfilled need, organizations spend 40 to 50% of their cost and expensive and extensive testing today. So for EV, in fact, we have a benefit. Uh, EV component are fairly well understood. In fact, uh, Mr. Girish very nicely mentioned about how complicated it is for IC engine to operate and to know the models. But EV, fortunately, we can have a electrothermal models fairly accurate, 95 to 99% accurate, accurate. Hundreds of publications are there in, in this domain. So all you have to do is take those physical model into your vehicle simulator, and that does the virtualization job done. So if so, where we are lacking, what's the major challenge? So. I think, I think you'll, you, you'll, you'll agree to me that in organization, bigger organization, the groups that, functional groups that we have, system engineering, controls design, component design, that's design motor, battery, as well as the vehicle integration, 
let me just go back, okay. As well as the vehicle integration group. So these groups do not interact with each other to the extent it is required to have a complete virtualization story. And that's the problem. This is the reason behind not having this range prediction corrected at the simulation level or the other simulations that I mentioned earlier. So how do we break this problem? Well, uh, we could have a long talk on the topic of MBSC and digital thread that binds across the different groups where silos exist. But what I'm going to be focusing more specifically today is virtual validations where the people with the detailed design ownership, your motor, your battery designer, how they can use their design knowledge directly into the vehicle integration as well as your software engineer, control engineers, how can they use that domain to tune the controls. So that's the basic philosophy of breaking the silos across the organization for increased virtualization and that's where most of the organization today are uh, pro uh, progressing. Though I, this is a very simplified view, uh, there are layers, especially on the control side, you can make the virtualization of ECUs at a different level. Uh, but I think on, on, a, on a simplified philosophy, breaking the silos of the organization is that is what is happening today in the virtualization world. Okay. I'll give you a specific example. This is not a, as rocket science as it may appear. It is in works. Globally, organizations have adopted this method in India also. OEMs have started this journey. And this journey of what we call it in three stages, where people are working on the motor, battery, component level. In fact, uh, this is not quite visible slide on this over here, but in India or probably anywhere that motor and battery ownership lies with the suppliers to start with. At least most of the OEM starts with that and they also have that in-house design. So in that case, in stage one, what organizations are doing is conducting a specific set of tests which can be used as the model to fit the further, further virtualization. If you go further, in the second stage, you now start combining your software and hardware design. Again, software world and detailed design world were different, they were not talking to each other. That is what is merger is happening over here in what we call a stage two. And what I call a stage three, if you have all hardware and software definitions are in place, you can do a complete system simulations. You can do drive entire of your car in the scenarios that are of interest, regulatory scenarios or the scenarios like going from here to airport or going in uh, Pune to Mumbai through guards. All the scenarios are possible. And that's ultimate virtualizations that we would be looking for. Okay, and that's where organizations are moving. Now I can give you some uh, examples, specifics uh, uh, on, on, on a motor without getting into detail. Uh, what typical control engineers will need to do is the tune the motor, how fast the motor should go, what the peak torque the motor should get it. If you take your vehicle on a, let's say commercial electric vehicle, if you want to take it on the slope, and if it stops on the slope, does it, would it slide back or would have enough peak torque to make sure that it goes, goes back again? All those scenarios requires you to not only have a good motor, but good control design. And today control engineers are doing that fine control tuning towards the end once the motor is available. So that is where simulation play a huge role. Uh, control engineer can get the simulations control model, which is again, as I mentioned, 90 to 95% accurate models are available that they can take upstream and fine tune the controller. Okay. So that is in a way it's called, what is the called the shift left philosophy. You are kind of shifting the entire controllers tuning towards the left. There is also another technology of AI and machine learning, which is getting popular. And if you ask me about, uh, uh, five, six years back, I used to think that engineering simulations, physics-based simulations and machine learning are mutually exclusive. But actually that's not the case. Uh, both are quite complementary to each other and basically application of machine learning greatly reduces, greatly reduces number of simulations that you need to do or even number of the tests that you need to do. Okay. So going further, uh, 
I uh, does uh, people apply this? Yes, I think there are several case study and thanks for Porsche for giving us this, uh, allowing us to share this case study where exactly this method is applied. Your detailed 3D physics motor that is taken into the reduced order transfer function lightweight and put in the system simulator. And that system simulator can be any system simulator that uh, any of the OEMs that are using. It's not required that any particular uh, type of system simulation needs to be done. And that's where uh, it's possible to analyze the entire e-vehicle ahead of time before even the building a single prototype. Similarly, this entire thing can go to hardware in loop. Uh, so simulation is not just stopping at the design level, but HIL platform. This is the where companies are going quite aggressively that getting the motor design directly feeding to the HIL without a single prototype. That's the massive advantage of what the traditional practice was. So that is also one of the trends that uh, we are seeing globally quite, uh, quite routinely. And uh, this is about the battery. I'll not go into detail. Similar thing can be done at a battery level where you are combining the software and hardware at much early stage. Uh, one thing though I want to touch about is the battery safety. We have seen the recently the cases of fire not only in India but globally. So uh, battery software becomes more critical. A model based safety critical software development and I think in this case Volkswagen has done uh, there's a very detailed reference is available with the integrated functional safety that approach considerably reduces considerably reduces the risk of the battery catching the fire battery catching fire is not just a mechanical but there is also lot to do with the software in preventing such kind of instances so we saw uh, so far in breaking the silos at a component level how physics engineers can work, they can provide their components to software engineers or integration teams. Once those all definitions are available, you are at a very good start. You can now start building your virtual vehicle, you can start integrating the various component of the virtual vehicle in your simulator. Okay, And once you do that, and this is what it is showing. Uh, battery, motor, software, even calibration, test data, entire virtual integration is done. Once this platform is available, the original problem which I mentioned of predicting the range in the scenarios that you have not considered, that is possible. As you can see in this example, we have taken real life scenarios in a urban, urban scenarios as well as traffic scenarios or freeway scenarios. In all scenarios, the range of the vehicle considerably changes and that can be exactly and accurately captured by simulation. And this is just a starting, I think. Once you have this platform, you could kind of virtualize a lot of tests. And uh, what I can see in this virtualization journey in the next five to 10 years, especially accelerated due to EV and ADAS, that we will be at a stage where lakhs of kilometers of testing, we could reduce them considerably and predict the kind of parameters that are required for the industry uh, as well as you know a uh, lot of the drive scenarios that industry has to go through those all can be virtualized so thanks for uh, for your time and uh, i hope i am in well in time uh, if if there is any questions i can take now or uh, you could also uh, connect with me uh, okay go ahead Hello. Yes, sir. I'm Mehul Gar. Thank you for this presentation. It's very well connected. I'm also a hill developer. I develop hill simulation systems for various companies. All so right. I have the same experience. So just wanted to ask two things. Uh, firstly, sure. the kind of simulators that you have asked us, like you are showing. So which simulator you are using for uh, showing these virtual scenarios? Maybe NSS is developing or any specific uh, organization can name. Yeah, so here a uh, couple of examples that I have shown over here or the customer example that's, uh, that uses ANSYS Twin Builder is the simulator. Which one? ANSYS Twin Builder. Okay. Uh, however, it's not tied to a particular system simulator, I would say. The philosophy of getting the core models is important. These it are customized simulators? Open open oh, no, no. These are not customized simulation. It could be kind of... Uh, it, it has this kind of a system simulation blocks like what you have in Twinbuilder, what you have in Mathwork or what you have in 
all other open modlica uh, all all other si system simulators that are there that can be used uh, what kind of here. scenarios we can maintain so that we understand like the ev batteries are not getting fired can we uh, make some use cases on this actually uh, sorry uh, can you like for example to have more safe evs actually so we see na, in the battery there is a firing accidents are happening and this kind of can we simulate this kind of scenarios actually a uh, very good question so uh, there are two parts of it as i mentioned there is a one hardware mechanical part of the battery safety and another software how software can catch that something is going to happen and start kind of uh, isolating the battery both are important hardware part you could simulate using very accurate explicit solvers are available today very very accurate the same way when i mentioned the crash five star crash that kind of uh, five star rating that we happen on the crash that can be predicted quite easily you have nail penetration test those are standard test that's does the mechanical reliability and there is the second part is the software where you need to make sure that your software can have all the sensors can catch the signals well in time to be able to isolate or whatever kind of remedy that needs to be done so these are the two different set of simulations that industry will need to do uh, to catch the fire but as of now it is not uh, nobody has made some kind of use cases like this or models. no they, these are these are standard use cases people do it okay. people do it okay. the Let's one that uh, yeah yeah, yeah. All right thank you thank you very much